So hey guys, welcome to Primal Nomad. Today we're actually going to be going over replacing a suction control valve for a Nissan Navara D40. Now this can be a common thing to replace if your truck goes into limp mode or if it has idling problems. That's what happened to mine. It went into limp mode after I booted it one time and completely lost power. So just wanted to go back to actually when I, this was when I first got the truck. This is probably about a year and a half, two years ago. So I replaced this valve and hopefully the video helps you guys. It's a little bit difficult to get camera work to show exactly where it is, but you should know it's just above the fuel pump on the left hand side if you're in Europe. Now the one thing I will say is get yourself a Denso suction control valve. There's a few retailers out there who sell them. Uh, they're the original part that Nissan used and just have yourself a small little ratchet kind of um, wrench and also some Allen key bits and I think it's a 10 mil, but you should see that in the video. So yeah, good luck guys, and I hope the video helps. So when you do this, you want to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery, because it's an electronic part. So you just want to loosen that. Give that a bit of a wiggle off. There we are. Just get that tucked out of the way. So now the battery has been disconnected for just about 90 minutes, just a little bit over actually. I'm going to start working on getting this out. And yes, I know the engine bay needs a hell of a clean. <laughs> but the actual suction control valve that we're going for is actually just down here. So you've got the fuel pump is down here, this is the EGR pipe. This is commonly where people blank off the EGR. Down here is where the suction control valve is. It's quite awkward to get into. So you can see this oil dipstick here is in the way. So guys, it's really hard to see that this down here the suction control valve just in there. So for the easiest access to get to the suction control valve, the oil dipstick here should be moved out of the way. There's a 10mm bolt here. So you can just undo that. Bearing in mind it's probably going to be really tight. There we are. Always in awkward places. Once this one done, just take that out. So that's out of the way now, moving free. So I can just push this out of the way and tuck it actually behind this hose here. That just gives you a bit more working space to get in here, down to the suction control valve where you can put. Two six mil Allen keys in. So it wasn't going in with the six mil. Couldn't seem to get it on, so I just went and got one of the new bolts out of the kit, and it's actually on that. It's a five mil. So I'm going to now put in the five mil Allen key head, and hopefully that should mean I can get on and actually get it off. Now I'm tightening the screws at the bottom by hand. Then I'll get the top one. Just being careful not to drop it. So it's number one. The one at the top is a pink connector. Actually, gonna have to use the tool again. 
Number two. There's the old gasket and that obviously goes in between here. So just gonna put the new one back in now. And uh, yeah, shouldn't be too much of a tricky one. Just a case of getting that cable connected to the back and then slotting it in correctly. There you can see the old suction control valve. So, good to see the end of this one. Right, I'm gonna go wash my hands so I don't get the new one all filthy. Be right back. And now I'm clean, ready to put the new one back in. So this is obviously where I've disconnected the oil um, dipstick. And I've just been tucking that behind there while I've been working. Down here is the uh, cable with the connector for the suction control valve and the suction control valve itself actually goes just in here it's a bit hard to see with the camera so um, but all I can say from getting it out in between now putting the new one back in is just persevere it's tight angle but it's quite quite easy once you get it so I have the new suction control valve here I'm gonna assemble this now so all it is is to put this o-ring over this piece here put the gasket in between and obviously use the new bolts here so I'm going to assemble that and then get on putting it together so I've just assembled the valve now you can see I've put the rubber ring on it I've put the gasket on and I've put the two bolts through I'm just uh, leaving it in the package so nothing gets inside the end until I'm right ready to go and it's just to remember that it's actually going back in at that orientation Right, so I'm just about to connect the new valve onto the switch there. So this is a bit of going to be a bit fiddly to take out the valve. And just push the bolts through. And try and make sure that that gasket doesn't come off. I'm going to connect this to its harness. Try not to drop any of these bolts. that's in now. Now I've got to bring that round and under and actually get the valve itself in. That's not good. Damn it. And just remembering the correct orientation is important. So remembering that the switch for the cable, so to speak, for me, is facing the airbox. That's the important bit. That was just for me. Might be different for you. So I've got that valve in now, which is tricky, to say the least. And in doing so, I did drop one of the bolts, but I can see that, so the most important thing is let me just get one in. Just lining up that gasket. I'm just starting that one, nice and finger tight. So guys, uh, the bolt dropped down in here, so I'm going to go get my inspection camera and I'll see you in there. Now because I was a bit of a fool and dropped a bolt, 
I have to have a look. Now what you can probably see here is um, a display that's moving and it's showing you what's on this. So now you should be able to see me. <laughs> and it's got an adjustable LED on it. So you can actually see yourself on there. Can you see you? There you are. So I have a suspicion I know where this went. So then turn the LED on and have a little look. And if it is, then I'll fish it out. Anything coming out? And what do we have it? There is. Can you see? There is the screw. So using the camera, I managed to fish out the actual bolt from that little pipe that it fell in uh, and I use it, the magnet attachment so really good bit of kit this I highly recommend it I'll put the link for it in the description obviously not very bushcrafty but yeah good for this kind of thing so I'm gonna now use this to start tightening everything up equally just so everything goes in nicely and square So just do a few turns on the bottom one, followed by a few on the top. Just keep repeating that process. Just doing the last few turns on this now. Make sure it's in there nice and snugly. There we are in there nice and tight. So now I've got that all in, so I can put the bolt back in. If you don't drop it on the floor. Right, so I'm going to just put the bolt now back in for the oil dipstick. And just tighten that up. in place and now the next thing to do now that I've done that reconnect the battery and then do a fuel pump reset so that's all in the pedal work now it's just a case of reconnecting the negative terminal I'm going to turn on the ignition now so all the dash lights are on and this is again to reset the fuel pump. So I'm going to wait three seconds, two, three, then I'm going to pump the accelerator five times within five seconds. Now wait seven seconds, three, six, seven, and then hold it for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. And now my engine light is flashing. Now I have to remove my foot from the accelerator, which I've done. Now I have to let it flash for a little bit and then wait for hold down the accelerator for more than 10 seconds. And this will reset the ECU and the fuel pump, putting them into learning mode. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to hold it for a little bit more. The engine light has now gone off for a second and now it's flashing again. And now I can take the car for a spin and that should put everything right. A little bit rough starting up there. Nothing's going up and down on the needle, so I'm gonna take it for a little spin. Right, so everything's driving nicely. Everything's 
seems to be really good. It seems to be a bit nippier on the acceleration now. It doesn't seem to have as much turbo lag. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just to see how it is now. Hey guys, so just took the Novara out for a test drive. Really happy with how it responded to the new suction control valve. So hopefully that helps some of you guys on how to do it. And yeah, looking forward to actually getting to drive the truck nicely now. So hopefully it should be the end of some problems. Right, good to see you. Thanks for checking in and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. So I've just taken this for about, you can see, 2.6 mile drive handling really well and it seems to uh, be idling really nicely obviously this is flashing this is uh, my clock spring in here that I need to uh, attend to but no it seems to have done the trick so I'll update if there's any other issues or any problems that occur from it I'm just gonna really see what the fuel economy is now for the last quarter probably gonna fill it up very shortly though so I guess Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.